Welcome to our seventh exercise. It consists of three parts. Part one will be the calculation of future PV capacity. First, some theory. If you want to calculate the final value of our initial value after n years of growth, and we have a relative growth rate of a P in percent, we have the following formula. K2 is K1, and then 1 plus percentage rate divided by 100 of the exponent of n. For example, if you have to so pay some debt and you have an interest rate of 3%, you have then, for example, from the initial value, 100 euros, and then times 1.03, and then the number as an exponent, the number of years, for example, uh, two years, you have 1.03 in square. Now we want to apply that to photovoltaics. Uh, we want to know the growth rate P, so we don't know it. Uh, we just have some values. Uh, we know that in the year 2012, the global PV capacity in the world has been 105 gigawatt under standard test conditions. And now we know in the year 2018, we know that the installed P capacity has been 509.3 gigawatt. So how we apply that? Just we put in the formula. So we, uh, we use the formula and want to know now the, the growth rate, the PPV. So that's the formula for PPV, 100 times then the nth root of KPV divided by uh, KPV zero. So what's, this was initial value, 105 gigawatt minus one. And uh, that is our PPV in percent. We put numbers in. So in between 2012 and 2018, this uh, six years. So we take the sixth root because N is six. And KPV one was 509.3 gigawatt. And KPV zero has been 105 uh, gigawatt. So we can eliminate the uh, gigawatts and only calculating with numbers. And the result is 31.1% or in decimal uh, 0.311. This is extracted the graph you know from the lecture. Now the next part of that uh, part one exercise is that we should calculate the year when the global energy demand can be fooled via photovoltaics. So um, as you know from the very first lecture, it uh, was calculated that we need about 18 terawatts under standard test conditions. We now know the annual growth rate, 31.1%. Because we already know the installed PV capacity and so on. This is the PV one is now the state of end of 2018 was 509 gigawatt or 0 0.5 terawatt. Second part is here, uh, what will be the final costs considering the cost reduction due to large production. As you remember, uh, there was a graph which has been showing the decrease of costs during production, uh, during uh, more installation. The theory is quite equivalent to the formula we used before. We just apply it now to costs. And we have negative growth rates because the prices are declining. So we have this one, we just put for P a negative value, but the rest remains the same. So the final costs are the initial costs and then this formula one plus the percentage of cost degression is in negative uh, divided by 100 if it's in percentage and the number of years as an exponent. So first is how much is the negative growth of prices? So remember this graph I was been mentioning here, we got a price reduction here symbolized by this red line. There was some bouncing around this line, but overall we can say over almost 40 years, this negative growth remained almost constant. And here you see the cumulative installed capacity. So a rule over the thumb is we can perceive 24% of price reduction with the doubling of installed capacity. They're both logarithmic scale, so take care on it. So you cannot just double this one, it's just logarithmic. So we apply that graph and 
24% of price reduction as doubling of installed capacity. We know the installed capacity of 2018 and we know the aim, that's 18 terawatts. So we want to know after how many years the installed capacity doubled. So we can apply the same formula here. We just applied not with euro signed number of years. Here we want to find out the number n. This is for doubling. So we have here the secondary capacity is a double than the initial capacity. And then we have just the logarithm to a base of one plus the percentage rate and the logarithm of K2 of PV to K1 of PV. So this is these are our values of installed capacities. So this is, uh, we know that we have a growth rate of 31%. So this one is a base of 1331 of growth rate and the capacity must be doubled. So it's just uh, this divided by that. This is just a two. And then we have, if we take the last numbers we use, then it's doubling every 2.424 years. It's not constant as you see on this graph, but uh, we take, okay, we say that the last six years as a base and then we take this for growth rate here. So now we want to know the year when the global energy demand is not only electricity demand, it's total energy. So also considering mobility and heating purpose and so on. If you want to fill, fill that, that by PV and we have the annual growth rate of 31%. We have the steady data there, end of 2018, beginning of 2019. The total installed capacity is half terawatt. So we apply that. So we want to know the year, how many years from to end of 2019 uh, will that be? We have the growth rate here, 31%. So we have the logarithm is to a base of 1.331. The a factor between the desired of the desired capacity and the existing capacity is a factor of 35.36. So we have to have a 35.36 fold PV capacity in order to reach that desired 18 terawatts. Uh, if you want to calculate that, sometimes you have to take care. Some calculators do not offer a base of 3.331. Usually the pocket calculators, they have a function with a base of 10. So this is called LG. This means for, uh, for logarithm with a base of 10 or the base E and that usually the expression LN, but not for the base of 1.331. So you have to apply a rule and the rule is here the conversion of a base via, so if we want to have this base, which is in our case 1.331, we take just the base of one that we know. Uh, for example, if you have a base 10, for example, then you apply the logarithm here, uh, LG would be that. Uh, and then the number uh, you want to take the logarithm of 35.36, that's our X, and uh, then divide it by also the uh, same base, but then the logarithm of your original base which we want to use to divide it by a logarithm to a base of 10 and the logarithm of 1.331 and finally you have that that logarithm to a to a base that it's not implemented in the pocket calculator so we do that here this is here equivalent for example if you take the base of 10 or lg and the logarithm of 10 you, so the, the abbreviation is lg of x so lg of 35.36 divided by lg of 1.331 and that is 12.47 so this is the number of years calculated uh, from the end of 2018 so we add that so will be the mid of the year 2031 will reach the 18 terawatts considering growth is constant and so on so that it's realistic but the years before showed that the, the, the growth has been relatively constant so that's possible in just a foreseeable time frame that we can supply the whole world with photovoltaics just considering the existing growth very important issue is the cost 
what will be the final cost when the 18 terawatts will be reached. So we do not calculate the cost of the 18 terawatt because there are several stages there. But we will, for the end consumer or the buyer, if this aim is reached, for example, and you have to substitute some PV panels of this 18 terawatts, how much will be the price then? So we know already from the graph before, from the cost regression, that at the end of 2018, the cost has been at 30 euro cents per watt peak. Then we have the cost formula as I presented already. Then we calculate the cost regression rate in percentage. So we have the regression of 24, a doubling of the capacity. This happens after we know already after we calculated before 2.4242 years. So we take the root of their end for the doubling and the price reduction uh, minus one. That is a yearly price reduction of 10.7%. So we can apply now this formula and then calculate the price. So that we have a number of years we calculated before to reach 18 terawatts is in 12.47 years. We now want to know this K2. This will be our final cost when the 18 terawatts being reached or will be reached. This is our initial price, 0 0.3 euro per watt peak. This is our percentage of, of negative growth in prices. So we put it here. So we have here all the values and uh, we have here uh, 0 0.073 euro per watt. So it's about uh, 7 cents per watt. Uh, what's really cheap. The values of those uh, 18 terawatts, so if you want to sell it after they've been installed, it will be a 1,314 billion US dollar. So that sounds a lot, but it's quite comparable to military expenditure and so on. So it's not really that much. So that's the first, the first side. And then the whole world will be supplied by energy from photovoltaics. The last part of our exercise is now uh, we uh, go very much smaller. Uh, we design a solar car port in Germany. And so we one, one part is uh, the calculations of the PV generator. But first we have to find out what is the consumption equivalent to the procedure we learned for designing a solar home system have some basic data of our car and then we have to find out what's the consumption and then we design the PV panel for that. It should run through the whole year. So equivalent to the solar home system, we have to consider the, the typical day of the worst month of the year to run the whole year. So we know the car should be used at 15,000 kilometers per year. So we consider equal use of each month and it consumes 14 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer. So that's quite a typical value. And the charging, charging uh, battery efficiency is 90%. It's quite optimistic. Usually it's some percent, less, maybe 85%, but okay, we can take these numbers here. First question is, what is the daily electricity to be supplied by our PV generator or from the grid, whatever we use? So we know the daily distance is 15,000 kilometers distributed equally over the whole year, 365 days. So we have here 31.1 kilometers per day. And uh, then we know the consumption per kilometer. So we have here 14 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer times 41 kilometer per day. That is equivalent then to 5.75 kilowatt hour per day. So then we should calculate the PV generation necessary, including the losses by charging of the batteries. So we have this number and this considers losses to be divided by the battery efficiencies. Then we have here energy need of 6.39 kilowatt hour per day in average. So one solution is to uh, use uh, the direct charge of the vehicle. 
So we consider we only use uh, the car during nighttime or we, we don't charge a long time and we can spend some part of the day to charge uh, the car. Then we can connect it directly to the PV generator. That's usually the cheapest solution because as mentioned from the exercises before, in Germany, for large scale PV production prices can go down to four cents per kilowatt hour. If you have a P uh, solar car port, it's usually in the vicinity of 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And if you uh, purchase that electricity from the grid, you pay about 30 cents per kilowatt hour. So it makes completely sense to uh, charge it directly from your solar car port. But let's consider the cost and the irradiance there. The problem is a bit the solar carport is not inclined usually at optimal angle due to the construction it's more flat and here we consider an inclination angle of the PV panel of gamma M of 10 degrees only and it's orientated towards south as usual as also the big power plants which is not very favorable for the grid support but now we just want to support our car so we don't have care about that. Consider a performance ratio of 0.85 and conversion photovoltaic conversion efficiency of a PV generator under standard test conditions of 17%. To calculate uh, the actual irradiance, we use a program called PVSYST, but there are other programs like Meteonorm for the irradiance only, and also PVSOL uh, also for calculating some systems. So just uh, here we, we use PVSYST, it's no general preference for that. Just want to show you how it works like. So we just put in the field type, so fixed tilted plane. You can also here use tracking plans and so on, but here or bifacial or we just have a fixed tilted plane here with a tilt of 10 degrees or we'd call it elevation angle. And here it's orientated towards south. So it's looking towards south. Azimut is zero. Then uh, this is calculated for yearly optimization. So you lose something compared to the optimum about 8% due to the very flat installation. And but you still will have 1032 kilowatt hour of irradiance uh, per square meter for a year. We go a step further and we take a look at the optimization, how it look like. So it's the same program, but we take a look at the optimization. Here you see this is our selected elevation angles given by a solar carport. We have here plane tilt called here, but same as elevation angle here. It's 10 degrees. Here we see winter because it's the worst conditions. And uh, if we would increase in winter by 60 degrees, uh, we would have considerably more power. So we lose due to the flat position about 28.4% for winter. Over the year, it was less, it was 8% only. Plane orientation, that's optimum, so south is quite good. Here we, we make a different uh, comparison of elevation angles. So here we have 30 degrees of elevation, a modular elevation angle. That's our st standard elevation of maximum yield. You saw here, so this is, okay, this is for winter. If you would choose uh, the yearly uh, optimization, you would end up here that, uh, that the optimum is here. At 30 degrees of uh, tilt and at the 8% gain against 10 degrees for yearly energy yield. Here is a table which you can uh, print out here. So you have uh, the different months and this is monthly irradiant, so therefore it's kilowatt hour per square meter per month. This is a global horizontal irradiance that's not relevant for us because even our solar power car is elevated by an angle of 10 degrees. With the diffuse irradiance, uh, we are just basically interested in the global irradiance here. You see here overall 1084 kilowatt hour per square meter per year. And here is the monthly distribution. So we have in January, we have only 34 kilowatt hour per square meter per month. Uh, while we have, uh, for example, in July, uh, we have the maximum 148 0.1 a kilowatt hour per square meter per month. While uh, we, in the first step, we want to see it as an independent system, so we can would not use energy from the grid. So we have to survive with the low irradiance values in winter. So here in January or even uh, December, even worse. So this is our worst months. There's only 22.6 kilowatt hour 
per square meter per month of irradiance. So this is already written here. So the monthly irradiance is 22.6 kilowatt hour per square meter. On a daily basis, that would be 0.75 kilowatt hours per day. I think the formula I gave you the procedure was calculated on a daily basis. If we now go to 10 degrees, so this was for an optimum, you see that uh, we got some uh, some losses in overall yield over, all, all over the year. But worse for us, our worst case of the month, much worse. You see here, you only have here in January, finally, a monthly rate of 17.3 kilowatt hour per month, or in other words, uh, 0.57 kilowatt hour per day. It's in Bartlieb Springer, which is very close to Paderborn. Unfortunately, the database, there was no database implemented for Paderborn, but Bartlieb Springer is only some kilometers away from Paderborn. So these values are pretty accurate. Finally, last but not least, we want to go to extreme. So uh, you don't install your PV panel on your solar carport, but for example, on a facade here, this is calculated here for 90 degrees on a facade on a house before. Then uh, you see that the total irradiance during the year drastically decreased, but uh, favorable for us. The monthly irradiance during the worst month increased considerably. So here for December, 25.3 kilowatt hours per month, or in other words, uh, 0 0.84 kilowatt hour per day. So that's much more than uh, we have before. Uh, we also can think about an immediate, not facade and not very flat, but a use an inclination angle of 60 degrees. Uh, that's calculated here. So we have here still above 1000 kilowatt hours per square meter year of a yearly irradiance. And if you take at the worst month at 26.6 kilowatt hour per month in December, then we still have 0 0.88 kilowatt hour per day. But you have to consider the additional BOS costs for the inclination of the modules and so on. So this depends very much on the local conditions. But uh, from a irradiance point of view, that's a good compromise here. This was 90 degrees for sage. And so we start calculating here. So just we start with the 10 degrees balloon here as is quite often applied in solar car ports. So we have the daily irradiance of 0 0.75 kilowatt hours per square meter for 10 degrees of elevation of our receiver of our solar panel. The energy to be supplied, we calculated already. So we just have the charging losses and total our PV generator has to supply 6.39 kilowatt hours per day for the first month. So that for the rest of the month, we have a surplus. So if we go back to uh, we come to this formula here. I don't know whether it's exactly now 2.93 because we, I added some pages to the questions uh, you wrote and, and uh, but you can uh, look up this is a formula here. So one is uh, by the area such as you have the energy to be supplied and then the irradiance times the PV efficiency, not the standard test conditions efficiency that's including already the performance ratio. You can do it also via the calculate the power, not the area. So we have the area of your PV panel, then the irradiance under standard test conditions, as you all know, 1000 watt per square meter and the and efficiency under standard test conditions. So we have here the, the energy being needed to be generated 6.39 kilowatt hour. The irradiance for a typical day during the first month 0 0.57 kilowatt hour per square meter. Then the conversion efficiency under standard test conditions, but then multiplied uh, here by performance ratio because it's not standard test conditions. We have temperature losses, reflection losses, and so on, as you all know. And then we would have a our necessary area of our solar carport of 77.58 square meters for the PV panel, which is quite big. If I translate that into power under the test conditions, so we apply to here the area times the uh, irradiance under standard test conditions uh, times because we 
take it for standard test conditions, then we take the efficiency under standard test conditions, then we have a 13.2 kilowatt, quite a big PV generator. If you are able to um, apply 60 degrees, that's more favorable because then a typical irradiance at the first month is not anymore 0.57 kilowatt hour per square meter, but 0.88 kilowatt hour per square meter. Then our area would be uh, here uh, 50.25 meters in square only. It's not only, but drastically reduced uh, to the solution with a 10 degrees of elevation angle. And the equivalent power is if you put in the number of 50.25 square meters, 1000 watt per square meter times efficiency under standard test conditions is 8.54 kilowatt. So the second solution is perhaps you have to go to work and cannot leave your car at home to be charged with a solar carport. So you use a second battery in the solar carport and you have to buy, buy the battery that's expensive, but additionally you lose energy because the batteries are not perfect. So you have to have charging losses at the first battery in your solar carport and you have the already known losses in charging your electrical vehicle. So we say that the cooler efficiency, that means the efficiency for the ampere hours going in and out uh, is 0 0.9. So you lose about 10% of the ampere hours, but also you have voltage losses because uh, the output voltage of that second battery is 48 volts only, but the necessary charging voltage for that battery is 54 volts. So you lose here six volts uh, due to that. First question is what is the energy efficiency of the second battery or the first battery if you see that from the point of the PV generator so you have to charge that battery so it's the first battery that the PV generator sees. So we have here the Coulomb efficiency 0.9 uh, and the voltage or loss efficiency is just uh, the quotient uh, by the voltages so you have a uh, output voltage of 48 volts and an input voltage of 54 volts and all together if you multiply it, you have a total efficiency of 0 0.8. The energy to be supplied is now more because you have to take care of the losses here of both batteries. So we have here the pure electricity being needed 5.74 kilowatt hours per day then the efficiency of your car battery 0 0.8 and the efficiency of the second battery 0 0.8 and then you finally you need 8 kilowatt hours per day yes it was the question here <laughs> comes later so what was the necessary uh, size of the pv generator so we do the calculation once again first for an elevation angle of the module of tendix and then we have here the known formula here and uh, we have here the energy to be supplied is 8 kilowatt hours the irradiance is still the same conversion efficiency is the same performance ratio is still the same so we come to an area necessary of 97.13 square meters in terms of power that is um, power under standard test conditions of 16.5 kilowatt if we take 60 degrees, sure, we have a better irradiance for the first month and then we have an area of 62.91 square meters and a power under standard test conditions of 10.7 kilowatt peak. Also very important are the costs. So we take the cost of the second battery, quite expensive now, it's a bit cheaper, uh, but usually the uh, a full cycle is really good. Usually uh, conventional batteries, they only have 3000 cycles maximum. So we pay a bit more, but get more cycles. And uh, it can be discharged to 90% only. Considering a lead acid battery, that's a really good value because lead acid battery, when you calculated the solar home system, you'd only discharge by about 50% to have a good relation between lifetime and usable capacity but for lithium ion battery uh, that's much better so you can discharge them up to 90 percent and uh, still have, um, a good number of cycles how much is the size and the cost of that battery considering a maximum depth of discharge is 90 percent 
and two days of autonomy, two days of reserve for really bad days, even during that winter days. And as I mentioned already, for the rest of the month, uh, we will have surplus. So that's really just the, all the calculations are for the first month. Uh, the size of the battery is then just we have uh, two days uh, in spare, the maximum depth of discharge. So the battery size is about 17.78 uh, kilowatt hours. And if you consider the specific initial cost of uh, 400 euro per kilowatt hour, that battery would cost us 7,111 euro initial costs. Let's see if we consider the lifetime of uh, that system, uh, how much uh, this would, whether we have to exchange a battery or whether this uh, 5,000 full cycles is enough for the lifetime of the system, 20 or 25 years. Usually this lifetime is given not in partial cycles because we, we are not uh, using the full capacity, we uh, use only partial. But if you transform it into full cycles, we will have then uh, cycles as we use it of about 10,000 cycles. So we have 5,000 cycles lifetime if you fully discharge the battery of 17.78 uh, kilowatt hours. Uh, while we are using eight kilowatts only, then uh, the number of full cycles available will be 10,000 cycles. And if we transform it into years and so on, if we take one cycle a day, as we are calculated for, um, then we have 27.4 years. That is uh, bigger than 25 years. So we don't have to replace that battery. We can calculate only with initial costs. We don't have to consider replacement costs. Then the next step, uh, we should calculate the electricity costs uh, with battery replacement costs. We calculate, we don't have to replace it already. So we can disconsider that. Then uh, for 100 km of driving of the indirect charge option, so we are the second battery. If PV modules lifetime of 25 years costs 0.5 euro per watt and the mounting, the BOS costs are 0.5 euro per watt. So altogether one euro per watt. The elevation angle first at 10 degrees of elevation angle. So we have here costs for that. So this is our power 13.2 kilowatt and then uh, those costs are uh, one euro per watt this is equivalent then to 13,200 euro for these 25 years the pv costs the driving distance during those 25 years so we have 15,000 kilometers per year times 25 years so at 375,000 kilometers we drive to that distance we calculate now because usually you have in Germany the cost per 100 kilometers. So we have the battery costs plus the PV costs, then the the, the costs per um, 100 kilometers. So uh, we have these are the uh, the battery costs uh, 7,111 euros and the PV cost 13,200. This value of 375,000 kilometers divided by uh, considering 100 kilometers. So at the end, per 100 kilometer, we have 5.42 euro per 100 kilometers. So that's not really, but uh, if you consider a conventional vehicle consuming six liters per 100 kilometers at uh, 1.6. Depending on the type of gasoline you have, even but nowadays it's even a bit cheaper, but it's a 9.6 euro per 100 kilometer. So you are uh, almost half price uh, with your electrical vehicle, even if you consider the more expensive solution with the second battery. So let's consider whether it makes sense with the 60 degrees of elevation angle. So as we all know, that's more favorable from the irradiance um, values. But we have to consider additional mounting costs of 0.2 to all together. Uh, we have 0.7 euro per watt of BOS costs. Let's see. So we have here uh, the PV costs plus the BOS costs. So 1.2 times 10.7 uh, kilowatt or 10,700 watts. So we have a total cost of 12,840 euro for that solution. The PV generator can be smaller on the other hand. So altogether, we save some money. The driven distance over 25 years is still the same. So we have then costs uh, which are slightly reduced only uh, of 
5.32 euro per 100 kilometers. So it makes sense to spend more money and elevate the modules. You have to consider shading then. This, this is not considered in this exercise, but if you have enough area, uh, it's better to incline them and if you don't have shading. If you have shading, it's a different issue. If you consider now the grid, so that you don't use a battery, but you feed into the grid, so you have negative costs, you have a gain paid by the utility of about 10 cents per kilowatt hour, it's even a bit less now, 9.6 9 cents at the moment, uh, but here you consider 10 cents per kilowatt hour you get from the utility by feeding your electricity into the grid, but you have to charge your vehicle at night time and pay 30 cents per kilowatt hour. This is good because you have a surplus in summer and all over the year. And uh, let's calculate how much that is. So you calculate the electricity costs for driving the grid balance options, this option so without battery. And uh, you have costs of 0 0.5 euro for the modules. Mounting costs because we have uh, 10 degrees of elevation angles of 0 0.5 euro uh, per watt peak. Solution is then we have the PV cost, the same cost as before, 13,200 euro. The cost, actually the gain, because it is a negative cost during the 25 years from the compensation from the utility. So we have a yearly irradiance of uh, elevation angle of 10 degrees. Uh, when you look up the table, you remember it's a 1,021 kilowatt hour per square meter per year. So that's a yearly irradiance here you get a 0 0.1 euro per kilowatt hour for 25 years. You have the yearly irradiance, the area of the op your PV panel uh, and the efficiency under standard test conditions time performance ratio that is. So we have here the compensation here by the utility 10 cents times 25 years times the yearly irradiance times the area of your PV generator times the efficiency under standard test conditions because the price is also here of what peaks this is also under standard test conditions and here we have to consider the actual losses here and that's included in the performance ratio and our performance ratio is 0 0.85 so all together uh, we gain during this 25 years 28,614.32 euro and uh, we put a, a minus here because it's cost here uh, so negative cost gain. The cost of the electricity is so the real cost because we have to pay for that. Take from the grid for our charging our vehicle. Just we can we don't use any intermediate battery. We can use uh, the car battery directly. So we have here the costs are plus 0 0.3 euro per kilowatt hour times 6.9 kilowatt hour per day times 265 days times 25 years. This is our charging energy to be generated, uh, also energy we need for charging our vehicle. And altogether, uh, we have to pay 17,000 because these are costs of uh, 492.363 euro. And if we all add up this here, so we have a gain of 28 and cost of 17, uh, plus the cost of the PV generator. So the difference between that is uh, plus 11,121.69 euro, to put the euro there, the cost of your uh, PV generator. Net gain is actually negative cost, so this is the cost, and while we have negative cost minus 13,000, uh, and then we have here minus 11,000 times minus is plus 11,122.69. Altogether, we have a negative gain, so we have to pay 2078.3231 euro more. So we have to pay for that. So we, we, we don't get any profit from our PV generator, but we supply our car, sure. So we have to pay for that, our car, and let's uh, calculate. So this is taken from the net gain, is it's really cost is 2078 euro. And if you consider uh, the driven distance during 25 years, we recalculated for 100 kilometers. So we have here the cost for 25 years of driving. And at the end, uh, we have here 0 0.55 euro per 100 kilometer of driving. So it's really cheap if you compare it to the cost I mentioned before of a gasoline car 
which is 9.6 euro per 100 kilometers. If you consider increased elevation angle of 60 degrees, we are mounting costs of 0.7 euro, and this you can do as a homework. Yeah, that's already we calculated already. Yes, there should be homework. Or you can switch off and uh, take a look at it later here. So we calculated that already here. Uh, so I go quickly over it. We have here the PV generator, which can be a bit smaller, but the mounting costs are a bit higher. And the cost or the gain of that electricity uh, here, we get a bit more radiance. Then we have those negative costs that we get from the utility of 18,330. 0.71 of gain during 25 years and the cost of electricity taken from the grid during those 25 years are the same 17,492.63 euro. So the net gain is here. So this is the cost of our PV generator. These are the costs of our electricity frame from the grid. And this is our gain here we get from the utility, but altogether we have a negative gain, so we have additional cost here. And then here we pay more for our electricity, but still much less than the cost compared to a gasoline car. Thank you very much.